Hey guys, this is Zach with 8020 Media here today with a video on carbon buildup. It's a topic that we've chatted about quite a few times in a lot of our videos with gasoline directed, uh, direct injected engines like the Ford 2.7 EcoBoost, 3.5 EcoBoost, really that, that whole EcoBoost engine family, as well as a number of BMW engines and really a lot more. A lot of modern cars, anything 2010 up, uh, a lot of cars do use direct injection nowadays. It comes with a number of benefits, notably better performance, better fuel economy, lower emissions, among a few other things. So direct injection is great technology. What do you can get kind of the best of all worlds, you know, keep the EPA happy with, with lower emissions and be able to squeeze more power out of an engine is kind of a win-win. And so a big positive for direct injected engines there. The downside and what we talk about as a problem in videos with pretty much any gasoline direct injected engine is that they suffer from carbon buildup on the intake valves and intake ports. And so in just a minute here, we'll, uh, we'll zoom in and kind of show what we mean here. We have a 2008 135i, it has the BMW N54 engine in it. And these are direct injected from the factory, and they're probably some of the worst engines out there in terms of carbon buildup and in how quickly it starts to build up and, and really accumulate in those intake valves. So we'll go ahead and zoom in here, guys, and, and show you exactly what this carbon buildup looks like, and then talk about, uh, talk about it in some more detail in a moment here. We'll, uh, we'll kind of throw some pictures in here and, and edit over this a little bit so we can get a full scope of what carbon buildup looks like. But if you're able to see in there, you can see all of the black gunk and buildup, all of the oil built up that's now kind of hardened and formed on those intake ports and valves. All right, so if you guys were able to, to see in there, um, again, if not, we'll, we'll get some pictures uploaded to, so we can get a better view of the actual carbon buildup on this BMW N54 engine. Um, but you'll see all of the gunk and, and all of the oil buildup that's now formed and hardened on the intake valves and in those intake ports. And so what happens is as that builds up, it narrows the, the space in those valves and can restrict airflow. It can also cause some tur turbulence and, and really just unsmooth the, the air going into the cylinders and cause some performance issues. So one of the biggest symptoms and problems with carbon buildup is just the fact that you lose performance over time. It's also the hardest symptom to tell because this engine has, I believe it's around 65,000 miles on it. These valves have never been cleaned before. So that carbon buildup has occurred over the course of the last, you know, 14 years and 65,000 miles. And as it builds up and gets thicker and thicker in those intake ports, the more performance you're gonna start losing, but it happens over such an extended period that it's hard to tell. It's not like you wake up one morning and suddenly you've lost, you know, 10, 15, 20 horsepower. Instead, you're slowly losing that power over time as the, the carbon starts to form and really build up in those valves and ports. Some other symptoms, all again related to the fact that that buildup is really restricting airflow and, and making it less smooth. You might get some engine misfires, especially because carbon buildup doesn't always happen evenly across all you know six cylinders in this engine or however many cylinders are, are in the engine in question. It doesn't always happen evenly, and on this car, the cylinder number one is quite a bit worse than any other cylinders, and so that can start causing misfires just because all the cylinders are now getting different, you know, varying amounts of air. So you can notice those misfires, some stumbling, hesitation while accelerating, and if you tuned your car and were to data log, you would also notice that the ignition timing is probably a little varying across all these cylinders. So anyway, those are really the biggest downsides to carbon buildup. It's pretty rare for it to cause any long-term serious issues with the engine. In very rare cases, you could have a big deposit of that carbon somehow manage to break free and possibly cause damage inside the cylinder, but that's very rare. Usually not something to worry about and plenty of direct injected engines are sure to go their whole lives without ever cleaning out this carbon buildup. But anyway, it still is good maintenance, especially if you wanna maximize performance and ensure that you're not losing, you know, 10, 20 horsepower or whatever the amount may be, depending on how bad the carbon buildup is, it's a good idea to clean this out over time. And so, in the next few weeks here, we will be walnut blasting this engine. That is the most effective method, I should say, to actually clean out the carbon deposits. 
So that'll involve a shop vac and an air compressor to basically blast walnut media shells into these intake valves. And that'll wipe away, pull out a lot of that carbon buildup. The only kind of thing that you have to be careful of is making sure the valves are actually closed so that you're not blasting any, you know, gunk or any media shells down into the actual cylinder. So you need to make sure that each cylinder as you're doing it, that the intake valve is securely shut. So again, we'll have a video coming up on that walnut blasting in the near future and a couple more topics to talk about with carbon buildup here and, and why it affects direct injected engines and not traditional multi-port or multi-point fuel injection as it's commonly called or just port injection for short. So on this engine or any gasoline direct injected engine, if you guys can kind of see over here, remember back to the clip where we zoomed in a little bit, you can see the, the fuel injectors are on this side of the engine. They go directly into the cylinder, hence the name direct injection. And so there isn't any fuel that is actually making it through the intake ports down there. And f gasoline has additives in it that are meant to kind of wipe away and break down any of those deposits. But with direct injected, again, that fuel is going directly into the cylinder, so you don't have anything to wipe away those deposits. Now, to show as a quick example, this car is actually, we're throwing a single turbo kit on it, doing a couple other things. So part of that is adding port injection for additional fuel flow. So here we have the intake manifold, and this is a port injection manifold. So you can see here, the fuel injectors will slot in. We also have the, the six injectors that will slot in here. And then of course, this manifold is going to bolt up right here. And so the fuel injectors now, there will be six injectors sitting over each one of those intake ports. As that fuel is actually sprayed into the intake ports, it's gonna wipe away all those deposits, break them down, and really eliminate the issue. So that's why port injected engines don't run into this carbon buildup like this. And on engines like the some of the newer EcoBoost, like the second gen 3.5 and 2.7 EcoBoost, those engines use both direct and port injection. So much like kind of the setup that we're about to have on this BMW, it has six fuel injectors going directly into the cylinder, so six direct injectors, as well as six port injectors, which spray into the intake ports or right at the bottom of the intake manifold and into the intake ports and valves. So that wipes away any carbon buildup and prevents that from, from becoming an issue on those engines. And that will be the case with this engine once we add the port injection manifold and all the fuel injectors. That will then eliminate this carbon buildup from reoccurring. So certainly a great setup on these cars where you have both direct and port injection. You get kind of get the best of both worlds. And port injection does have a few benefits of its own. It's a lot easier to flow fuel, which is why instead of upgrading these fuel injectors and high pressure fuel pump, it's a lot easier just to add six new injectors and get a whole port injection set up. So very common on high performance engines that are direct injected, common to add that port injection as well. One final comment, one question that, that we see come up frequently is why don't you hear about this as much on diesel engines, right? Most turbo diesels are also direct injected. They do not have port injection. So why don't we hear about carbon buildup being as big of an issue on those engines? And a big reason for that is gasoline engines run with vacuum in the intake system. And so that's caused with the throttle body and actually having that, that throttle plate in there, it creates extra vacuum. Diesels, just like gasoline engines, do produce some natural vacuum as when the piston moves downwards and the intake valve opens, it creates that natural vacuum of pulling the air in. But it's to a much lesser extent than on a gasoline engine where you have an intake system that's naturally adding vacuum in there. So essentially there's just a lot more vacuum on a gasoline engine, which means that you have a lot more oil actually being pulled back through that intake tract and more oil that can then stick to these intake ports and valves and form those carbon deposits. So that's really all there is to, to carbon buildup. It's, um, it, it sounds complex. It's something that is a little bit newer, probably to a lot of people, because again, traditionally cars use port injection and this wasn't an issue, but it's becoming a bigger topic and more of an issue as more and more cars move to direct injection. But fortunately, Ford's not the only one that has done the, the setup with both port and direct injection. And so that's something that will likely become more and more common to not only reap the benefits of having both fuel systems, but to also eliminate the carbon buildup issues. One final comment, again, we will have that walnut blasting video in the next few weeks here, which will show a more in-depth overview of carbon buildup and how to actually clean that out of the intake valves. In the meantime, if you guys enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out the description for more information below. Thanks, guys.